Hey everybody, it's Andy. Welcome back to my show where I help you build a career you love. Thursday live office hours, great to have you. We're dedicating this whole hour to your questions. I have one quick, very, very brief, but very important message I wanna share with you. And I hope you chime in here and give my friend, Benny Reyes, a big shout out. I'm gonna tell you who Benny is. This special young man is a third grader at Hilltop Elementary in McHenry in Mrs. La Civita's class. And he loves his teacher so much that the other day, he, he actually made her and brought her a bracelet in our sh beloved Chicago Bears colors, the navy and orange, because he knows how much of a Bear fan, fanatic, Mrs. La Civita is. So she said so many thanks to Benny, but she said, Benny, this is so awesome that Mr. Lasavita is gonna wanna steal it from me. So he went home and the next day came back with a bracelet for Mr. Lasavita. This is it, I hope you can see it. It's the blue and orange. Benny Reyes, I wanna tell you how much I love this bracelet. It's gonna be on me all the time. I can't thank you enough and I really look forward to meeting you and all the other third graders at Hilltop when I come for a visit. So. If I'm speculating, I'm on the big screen in your classroom, can you all give yourselves a big roar, like so big that it wakes up the people in the hallway and in all the other classes, and if the principal comes in, you just tell her it wasn't your fault, it was totally Mr. Lasavita's doing. And then when I come, I'll hash it out with her. But I wanna say thanks. I hope you guys are doing something great today, and Ms. Mrs. Lasavita's got a ton of fun planned for you, and hopefully you're learning a lot. So now go back to whatever it was you were learning and you can always watch this later on the replay. But thanks again, Benny. I love it. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And for everybody else, great to have you. I, uh, I see the chat is already getting pretty lively. So what I want to do is uh, I just want to make sure, let me know that you're here. Let me know where you're from, what you do, what you need. Put some question marks in front of your in front of your questions. If you are in one of the Mile Walk Academy programs, put a hashtag and the program you're in. Let me know if you're a boot camper or a leader or a resume masterclass person or an iTeamer or just a general awesome follower in the community. I love I love to hear it from you, and I always like to know uh, what assets you have at your disposal. So if I need to point you to something, I know you got it. All right, John Bailey, I think you are first. Hang on, I gotta check it. Uh, I got, yep, yeah, oh, wait, I got something, Kara, can you do me a favor, just confirm, I've got uh, John Bailey at 926, is that, is that the first, I thought I saw something earlier, uh, if, if that's not the first thing, can you let me know, that's what I have, but I, I could have sworn I saw something, hope everybody's doing great today. John Bailey, 926. Okay, John Bailey, congratulations to you, my friend. Glad uh, you have a new job. I think I saw that somewhere, and I haven't gotten to read the whole story, but I will. And I love to uh, always chime in and, and support you. And I'm glad everybody else did as well. All right, let's see. I got more to living. One of three. Hey, Andy. Website that shall remain nameless features hundreds of hiring managers venting about being contacted by applicants demanding that applicants have no right to contact via email. Okay, this is funny. Uh, they claim to be severely bothered by emails and that applicants disrespect them by not going uh, ex expected route and applying through the company website without involving them too. What are your thoughts on their disgruntled perspective since much of your advice centers around about networking, boss hunting, etc.? Also, thank you for your thoughtful reply in the previous video. You are welcome. More to living. I wish I knew your name. Uh, hundreds is negligible. There are 7 billion people in this world. A lot of them work. And I am sure that uh, there are people that are bothered by it. As a matter of overall percentage and statistic in your favor, I would not, I would not spend any time paying any attention to that. And I have loads, I have however many hundreds of people out there are beefing about that. Uh, I have probably 10 times as many testimonials from people in my programs or people on the YouTube channel or people on the blog that tell me 
that that boss hunting technique is their number one surefire way of contacting people. So I would not at all be bothered by it. And if I, as I was a hiring official in a corporation for many, many years, anytime I ever got an email like that, I welcomed it. I appreciated that the person took time to craft it directly to me. And if somebody is, let, let, wait, let, let's just think about what happened here. I received an email, I was so bothered by it that then I had to spend more time to go to some site, which I don't know what it was, to actually write about how disgruntled I am. What I would say to you is, would you even wanna work for a person like that? So think about that. So that's my, that's my thought on that. I think that's absolutely laughable. I wish I could actually tell you what's going through my head right now, but you get the gist. So that's what I think about that. Daniel Mahias, hey. Ottawa, Canada, love it. Is it true that it is better to look for a job while employed? Well, I think that there are several factors that go into your overall success when you're looking. I do like being employed and looking because you're less in a hurry, you're less panicked, you are better positioned to make a decision from strength, where if I have a job that I generally like or or it's not miserable or anything of that nature, then I don't actually have to take a new job and I can be more thoughtful. That's really the only thing that I I think is important. I I when we I have a recruitment for Milewalk. We've been recruiting people for 15 years. We reach out to them proactively, so we actually recruit people. Uh, most of the people that we've ever connected in a new job have been people we've reached out to proactively. They did not come to us, we went to them. And when, when we reach out to them, sometimes, occasionally, they, uh, well, sometimes they're very, very happy with what they're doing, but they're smart and they return the phone call and we get connected and sometimes we're able to give them an even better situation. Sometimes they're not very happy with their company and they're all ears and they're willing to listen. And other times we happen to catch somebody who's not employed. For those people, the people that are unemployed or the people that are very unhappy with their current situation, the only thing I worry about is not their uh, my ability to advertise them or market them to my uh, clients, the hiring companies. I'm more concerned about them making a rash decision and actually taking a job that's not great for them. So we do a lot of uh, self-evaluation. I have them do a lot of self-evaluation. We do They do it with us and all that good stuff so that they don't make a poor decision. And then we can evaluate as the recruiter whether this is a good match. And that's really the only thing that I care about. So I wouldn't be overly concerned. And in the Mile Walk Academy, a lot of people find me uh, because they are they are either in between jobs or not very happy or they're looking you know, on my blog or on YouTube and they're finding answers to uh, challenges that they're facing in, in moving out. And a lot of them are unemployed and a lot of them are very successful in, in finding their job. So yeah, I suppose that that matters. The other thing is, when are you looking? What time of year is it? October is the absolute worst month uh, of the year to try to find a new job. Um, I'm not trying to scare you or anything. That's just statistically a fact. A lot of times because uh, teams are already assembled, teams are already built, uh, companies are trying to drive to uh, project completion. And a lot of times what they do is in October, they're planning for the following year. Not all companies are on a fiscal calendar year, but a lot of them are. And what happens is in October, there's this lull. And then in November, it starts to pick up again because a couple things happen. They want to hire people for January, so they, they need to go through a process that also includes, for a lot of us, the holidays in between. And so they need to be crafty about trying to recruit, get their candidates in the door and get them in process so that they can evaluate them. The other thing is some companies want to hurry and hire people because they have budget that they've allocated for the current year that they're afraid that if they don't spend it, in the current year, they're going to lose it. So they think, hey, it's better it's better to get people in now and spend some of that money uh, this year. So all these things contribute to a hiring a hiring uh, frenzy toward the end of the year and the beginning of a new year. So even if you're unemployed, that's still a better time to look. Summertime also not super great, but here again, I mean, there's a lot of factors in go in, that go into not to mention the tactics you're searching, how you network, all that good stuff. Uh, your skill set. So we've had a lot of uh, people in my job search boot camp that are 
Uh, they have great skill sets, and even though they were unemployed, they were able to find jobs very, very quickly. So I, I would not get too hung up on that if that's your situation. Connie Cotter, great to have you, my boot camper and leader and person who has forever my undying love. Okay. So wait, Daniel, I think this is another question. I've been working in a small tech company for four years, but doing a PhD at the same time. I do not see myself in this company in the future. So I'm debating if I should focus on finishing my PhD and then look for a job aligned with my career expectations or continue to work with my current company and redesign or resign when I finish another job. That is entirely up to you. I, I don't know what your, your PhD is in, if it matters, I, I, I will not even give you counsel on that. That is a personal preference for you. It's where you want to focus. Uomo, received a verbal offer direct from the hiring manager. I asked if there was a way to increase OTE, that's on target earnings for anybody who didn't know that. He said he would ask his VP. It's been over a month with no reply to my calls and emails, ideas. I'm, I don't have any ideas. I don't understand why somebody would give you a verbal uh, offer and then ghost you. I, I, I really don't. I honestly don't. I don't understand how this stuff happens. I really don't. I know that it happens. I don't understand why it happens. Evelyn O, yes, you, yes, you did get a resume review and you are a beloved boot camper and an all around pretty awesome person. If you've been unemployed for a few years, will potential employers still ask for references? Yes. So just go back to whoever you want to offer up. Usually employers will, Evelyn, they will not specify where they want the references from. Occasionally, I stress the word occasionally, they will say, can you give me, oh, I, we see you managed people. Uh, would you be, in, you know, can you give us somebody you managed, one of your staff? Could you give us a peer and could you give us a supervisor? Sometimes they'll say, could you give me three supervisors? Sometimes they'll say, can you give me clients, depending on the nature of your work, of if you were a consultant or something of that nature. Occasionally, it's up to you who you want to give them if they don't specify. So that's, that's, that's my response on that. Marcus, Marcus, uh, buddy, I, I, I still have not gotten to the video. I completely appreciate you shooting it for me. I will get to it this week. I really want to thank you for that because I will put it to good use. And congratulations. And I can't wait to see what you had to say here. Starting new job in 10 days, what do you recommend I do leading up to starting? Relaxation. I asked my boss if I can do anything to get up to speed, but he said no. Enjoy your free days and relax. I love that response from him. I, I kind of feel like it's the best thing to do. Uh, one thing that I we also watched your energy videos. Great. Uh, do you have any tips for increasing energy during those times of day when you are typically low energy? Yes. Okay, wait. Two couple things. To answer your first question, uh, if you've already spoken with your boss or the management team, do whatever it is that you can do so that when you walk in on your first day, you have a little bit of an idea of what's going on. If that means reviewing collateral, past projects, what you're about to do, if it means getting a, your laptop or your computer or whatever, anything that you can do to ease that transition. Then what I would do is there's a video that I have out there called the best advice for starting a new job. I would highly recommend you watch that and that will get you in order on what to do as you start. I have some other videos coming out that have to do with the information that you should be capturing and putting into uh, your corporate database if they have a succession planning database or a repository that houses the projects and the things that you've done. In the absence of that video, which I have not released yet, I would go check out my video on how to get promoted, uh, yeah, getting, get, get promoted at work using this resume building tool. Watch that because that will also help you get ready for the information that you need to capture as you start to work. And there's a career achievements journal there. There's some other things that I think will be really helpful. That's on that. On the energy, I actually, uh, I didn't really intend to give you any announcements today, but I am going to put a plug in on my leadership monthly live program. We just did habit building 
on October 9th coming up, it's the energy discussion. I am going to give you literally everything I do in my life every single day and how I look at my life overall and what I do every single day from the moment I roll out of bed, actually the night before, the moment I roll out of bed and all the way through the day and everything that I do from the way I plan my day to the way I transition to what I eat to how I sleep to how I work out, I'm going to give you everything, but you got to be in that program to get that. So that's October 9th, but get in the program now, start catching up on some of the other stuff. In uh, in particular to your question, when you have low energy at any point throughout the day, the easiest way to pick the energy up, the easiest, fastest, instantaneous way to do that is to get in motion. So this does not happen to me very often, um, but when I, when I transition from one activity to the next, let's just say, sake of argument, this will not be the case, but let's just say when I got off this session at noon with you today that I was dragging and I had to go into something that started, say, at 12.15. What I might do is I get up, I'll kind of close my eyes for a quick second, I'll let go of what I just did, let it go, I, you know, reflect on it or whatever, hey, that was great, really enjoyed it, and then what I'll do, I'll close my eyes for a minute, I'll get situated about what I'm about to do next. I literally consider what I'm about to do next. Not just jump into it, not just pick the phone up, not just write an email, not just do anything. Not go meet somebody, not hop in my car to drive to a lunch meeting or whatever. Uh, then what I'll do, if I need to, I'll, I'll zip up and down the stairs in my house. Like, you can walk them, you can run them. I got 15 stairs between my basement and the mid-level, and I got 15 more between... You know my my level and the and the and the upstairs. That's thirty stairs. That's a lot of stairs. I mean, you can go up and down them, up and down them, or whatever. You, you run in the hallway in your office. You could go in the stairwell in your office building. You can walk around the block. But I I tend to want to get in motion. I do some other things that I'm not going to share with you that have more to do with um, meridians and other things. But basically, that's what I would do. Get in motion. Your energy will pick up, even if you're tired. So that's that's what I do. All right. Marcus, yeah, I'm so happy for you, man. Jason Garrity, hey. Davida, how you been? Oh, I hope you're okay. We've been missing you. Glad you're back. I'm so, so glad you're back. And I'm so, so sorry I missed you when you were here in August. And we just had this Chicago meetup. I wish you could have come. Hey, mom, how you doing? Looking forward to seeing you for Sunday dinner at our house. Just make sure Dad brings the thing. Are ya? Boot camper here. Oh, I think I know who that is, but I, I will not say your name. I'm f feeling really defeated in my job search. It's tricky, trickling over into my daily life. Any tips to rejuvenate hope? Now, I'm wondering if you just got in the boot camp yesterday or the day before. Uh, so if you did... We're going to support you and make sure that that does not happen to you. But what I, what I would tend to do is, yes, I have tips on rejuvenating hope. And one of the things, uh, I'm going to ask Kara, I'm going I'm to challenge Kara here. Uh, I do have a video out there uh, on how to stay positive in your job search, staying positive in your job search, something of that nature. But for you, since you are a boot camper, in module three, toward the end of the module, I give you a special challenge that, so you know, if you haven't gone, I'm I'm assuming if if I got you right, you haven't you haven't started the boot camp yet, or you just jumped in, and go through the first you know two modules, then hit the third module, go through that, look at the challenge itself, and the focus on the challenge is getting you not only focusing on the right activities to to make better traction in your search and get you momentum and get you comfortable with with activities that a lot of people are uncomfortable with it gets you get very comfortable very quickly when you do this but the most important thing about the challenge will be that you will start to notice that you are in control of what you're sending out when you are in control so there is there are many reasons why people get unhappy in their lives for many reasons. And I mean, you could have a breakup, you could have a loss in the family, it could be all kinds of crazy stuff that goes on. 
But one thing that's common for people is we generally tend to get unhappy when we feel like we are not in control of what we are doing. So I'm putting my resume in an applicant tracking system. Nobody is getting back to me. I don't see any opportunities in my local area. I live in an automotive town, but my specialty is healthcare. I can't really seem to find any jobs. All of that, why me talk, is, is we feel... Uh, unhappy because we don't feel in control or that there are opportunities that are out there or we feel limited by what we're seeing. The moment we turn that around and start working inward out in in to out with, hey, all I can focus on is doing my research. All I can focus on is putting a great resume together. All I can focus on is targeting the right types of companies. I can focus on sending them messages. I can focus on my reaction to their silence or their or the, or the naysayers or be in, you know, it'd be great if somebody got back to me and wanted to talk to me. So you will start to feel more in control when you're focusing on the quality of your of your collateral and the and the quantity of your outputs. Quality outputs, but quantity outputs as well. So that's I mean those that will get that will get you and your attitude dialed up the fastest. It really will. It really will. And uh and, and, and if you are who I think you are, do, do me a favor, my boot camper here. Can you let me know? I won't use your name, but can you email me? Let me know that's your YouTube handle so that I know uh, when you share your story with me that, you know, what you're do, you know, who you are, what you're doing, what your function is and all that good stuff. Because you probably haven't, you might not have even gotten that email yet from me. But when you do, let me know if that, that's your YouTube handle. All right. Tim Gales, how you doing? I, uh, I I want you to know, my boot camper friend, I did read your story yesterday. Loved it, and I will re- reply to you. Great to see you. Uh, I don't know if you were on the session last night, but uh, but great great to have you. I love that story. Riaz, hey. Tim Gales again. Hey, Andy, I have a 15-minute interview next week. How do I prepare? What is the purpose of this small initial interview, and what should my goal be? Okay, so Tim. Uh, first couple couple things. Uh, how to prepare that that is a very, very general question. I'm gonna give you a very, very general answer. And but I do but thank you for letting me know that it's a short one. So this sounds to me like it's a screen. Okay, so so lots of times what'll happen is the good news is you actually are gonna get a live person. And it's probably going to be either what we call a screener or a sourcer, or it could be the recruiter. It's likely not going to be the hiring official or anybody of authority if they're only locking out 15 minutes. I want you to watch uh, module four of the module one and module four of the boot camp before you do anything. If you've already seen them, then I want you to do that. The back half of module one, all of module four, that's all the interviewing stuff. Then there is another video out on my YouTube channel about the six questions you should ask during your recruitment screen. Watch that. Kara, maybe we could drop drop that in the chat somewhere. That is is a really, really good one for you to watch. These are questions that if given an opportunity in a tight window like that, those are the six or eight questions I would want you to ask. Okay, don't, don't, don't be overly concerned about getting all your questions asked. The important part about the 15 minutes is that you get leave that person, this is the outcome, you leave that person with the impression that you are awesome, you are interested and excited to get going, right? Like, I'm, I'm ready to get going. This, this sounds great. I'm really enthused. They should not say anything within those 15 minutes that should turn you off to the, to the um, opportunity. So in that tight window, it... It is literally, I mean, virtually impossible for them to get everything that you would need to know for you to make an informed decision that this is not for you. So your goal is not to get your questions answered. Your goal is to just make sure you're making a good impression. Then secondarily, you want to make sure you check that video about the six questions to ask. Pick some of those because those will be helpful things for you to know. It might just be, hey, I just want to make sure, I want to let you know a little bit about you know, the company, the opportunity. You know, I want to just hear your voice. It could just be a light communication screen. Um, I don't, I don't know who it's with or what it's for. Um, and now I'm getting some additional stuff. So, so that's what I would do there. But check, check, check that out. Check that out. All right. 
hang on, I now see I'm getting a message. Um, okay, wait, we had some earlier John Bailey. Okay, John, hopefully you're still here. All right, one of three. What is the best way to resign after a short time? Assume one gets a contingent offer from Dream Company for Dream Job at Dream Salary but needs to take another job to pay bills. So, John, real simple. Go to You got the interview intervention book. Go to the chapter on resigning. Do that. And, and it doesn't matter whether you've been there a short time or a long time. And what I would do is... I've given you the template of the resignation letter. Use that. Thank you for the opportunity. I, I'm out of here. Here's my date. You don't have to say anything in the resignation letter. You can communicate if you would like to, because it's been such a short time that you're just you're sorry it didn't work out. I I got an opportunity with my you know dream company, dream job, and so on. I really can't pass this up. This stuff happens. It feels awful for you or for you all because you don't do it very often. I totally get it. You're human, right? You want you don't, you want it to work out. But that's what I would do. And then if one told the temp or filler job up front about the contingent offer, gave them a chance to match and they came up way short, does that make a difference? It does not. Do you have a template resignation letter? I do. It's an interview intervention. It's in the chapter. All right. Uomo, why are companies so inconsiderate to candidates stating you are moving to the next interview and they go dark, forced acceptance on verbal offers without providing deta- benefits, details? Uomo, I do not know. I really do not know. And what I, what I actually think is that I, I genuinely believe this because I observe it from both sides. Candidates don't behave properly. Companies get tired of it. Companies don't behave properly. Candidates get tired of it, right? And so we've got this awful cycle of of people being bummed out at each other. And remember, companies are just made up of humans just like you. So I don't know why that is. I think that's awful. I would never do it, but it happens. I don't don't know the, the rationale behind it. Norbert Hay at university, 20 years old, applying for a year placement at Airbus at Airbus to do an aeronautical engineering. Awesome. How should I structure my resume? What should I include and focus on? Many thanks. Norbert, simple answer. Just watch my video on how to make your college resume stand out. There's a template in there, and I even filled in a little of the template for you in the profile section up at the top. Just use that. Perfect for you. Riaz, Annie, if I will tell you summary of my situation here, would you be able to give me a suggestion here? I will do my best. Seth Black Media, good morning to you too. I'm trying to find a job in a state that I want to move to, Colorado, but I'm really lost on how and where to start looking and not wind up at a dead end. Am I a vi- I'm a video creator. Any suggestions? Yes. Okay. So a couple things. First thing is, Regardless of your function, for anybody, I have a video on how to get an out-of-state job. Best way to get an out-of-state job, whatever it's called. I don't know, Kara, can you throw it in the uh, throw it in the chat? And it's really good. I go through the nine points. Do that. For where to start, you need to start with, you know where you're going to. That's good because now you're focused in one spot. You could search in Colorado just like I could search in Colorado. I'm in Illinois. So it makes no difference whether I'm searching for jobs in Chicago or I'm searching for jobs in Colorado. The only difference is I got a different zip code and you're still looking. Create your target company list. I have a video out on that. You can check that out, how to create a target company list while job searching and go from there. Then what I would do is watch all of my job search networking videos and lucky for you, on Tuesday coming up in in four days, I have literally a a video on how to craft the perfect networking message. And so that's coming out. So that'll be out in four days. Check that out. And then if you are a video creator, uh, if you are, now when you say video creator, you mean you are a video editor? So I'm a video creator. 
Th that's what I do. I create videos. Are you the editor or engineer or, or any of that? If you are something like that, you can also work remotely. All you need is the files. So I'm not sure unless you are actually somebody who is there with the camera, filming you know, the, the, the talent or whatever, however you want to say it. But um, regardless of what you are, I would go about it the way I, I just packaged it up for you. I think I got those. Mary, hey. Yes, I know the MCK. Great to meet you the other day. That was awesome. Linda La Savita from Hilltop School. Yes. Great to see you all. Or hopefully, hopefully you saw me. Sarah from West Africa. Great to have you. Carrie Freeman, congratulations on your job. That's awesome. Riaz, have an IT degree, but my last eight years is not related to pure IT. I was involved in designing of networking, cabling, infrastructure, and now I would like to change my career. Awesome. You're in the, you're in the, you're in the neighborhood there, my friend. That's IT to me. Uh, so I, I, uh, if, you, if you want, one of the things you could do is I have a career changers playlist on my YouTube channel. There's a whole bunch of videos there that kind of take you through the steps, the process. We talk resume, we talk covers, we talk targeting, we talk all that. Check that out. You guys are awesome. <laughs> yes, Evelyn, we'll be there in February. We need to just get our, our tickets and our, our hotel. Next meetup, by the way, is in, in Clearwater, Tampa, uh, December 6th. If anybody can make it to Frenchies. Frenchies. This is where I'll be on December 6th. It's my, my wife's birthday. And, and she said that we should celebrate it with your community. How awesome is that? All right. Kevin Peterson, hey. Before accepting an offer, what is a key items? What is a key items to consider? Kevin Peterson in the boot camp. Uh, oh, wait, you're in the leadership. Okay. Uh, Kevin, check out uh, the video, and hopefully Kara has this uh, at her disposal, but uh, there are eight, eight key questions to ask yourself before you accept a job offer. Those questions that you're asking yourself are, are also things that you need to ask the employer to get the data so that you can ask yourself and you've covered it and you understand it. I won't go into what all of eight of those are. All you need to do is watch the video. For any of you out there, if you are not in my programs, you should watch that video and never accept a job offer until you do because that is going to be a huge safety blanket for you. So I can't, uh, I can't remember the title, but I think it's eight questions to ask yourself before you accept a job offer, something like that. Riaz, uh, one, so I, I understand, um, you have to keep in mind that, you know, it's one, it's one thing when you, you know, you watch one of my free videos, it's 10 minutes long, I give you the seven steps, but it's not just understanding what it is that you need to do, there are deeper levels of steps of how to actually execute what it is that you're doing. So I know you watch the one video, that's one of my earliest videos. There's a lot more out there that'll give you deeper uh, um, insight. I also, for your career changers, if you want to invest in the boot camp, there's everything in the boot camp, and there's also an extensive module on career changing and the 12 steps that you need to go through and the exact steps and how I did it twice to change my careers. So, you know, th those are some additional assets for you. Uh, I, I, I would watch all the other videos in the playlist. That is only one and it is a good, it is a good one, but it's not even my deep, deepest ones. There's more, there's more there. We did also a, um, a video recently about the fastest way to change careers and it's really the fastest and smartest. And I highly recommend you watch that one because for, for you, you're, you're making, a, you know, you might be making a minor pivot uh, within IT. So I would check that out. All right. Let's see. 
Ryan, hey. Good on college mascots, but weak on elementary school. <laughs> I think they're the Hawks, Hilltop Hawks. Mrs. La Civita, if you're still here, I hope you're getting all those remarks for Benny. Man, zipping through her. Oh, my goodness. Holy cow. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Uomo, best email, best email to send a sales director about an open position on their team. Uomo, go to my YouTube channel. Type in boss hunting in the search bar. Up will come a boss hunt, a boss hunting video. In the boss hunting video, it's maybe half a dozen minutes, six, eight minutes. Go through it. There's a two template download. One template is a boss hunting cover letter if you're targeting what you consider to potentially be a hiring official or a senior manager in or senior management resource in the area that you're trying to get into in a company. The other one is that's if you don't know if, if a position exists. The other template is if you do know a position exists, a specific position exists and you know them to be the hiring manager or you speculate that they are likely the hiring manager, I give you the template and that's the best email to send. Magdalena, how are you? You recently discovered my channel and I love it and I love having you here. Love it. Can we all give Magdalena a huge hug, live office hours hug, L-O-H hug for her and all and all the early, er, newer, newer timers, first timers, and I, I, I love all the old timers too. I think I got that. Yes, Tim. HW got the job. Awesome. Ryan Kelsch. Andy, thanks for the email. I replied with something interesting. If you'd like, if you'd like, if you missed it. Something about my Iron Man. Uh, but yes, I'm going to give you those secrets on the 9th of October. I think that's what you're getting at. If that's not what you're getting at, email me again. Send it to support. Because then if I miss it, Kara will make sure I see it. Uh, I don't know what that handle is, G-R-T-Y-U-J. If you tell me your name, I'd love to know that. Uh, hi, hey, Andrew, I have an interview tomorrow. I was just wondering how to work out what questions to ask. Well, one thing that I would do is if you if you got the interview tomorrow, I want you to do two things today. Uh, it, so there's, well, actually, I'm going to give you two quick ones, but there's a few others you can do. I do have a video called How to Choose the Right Job. The reason I mentioned that video is because in that video, I talk a lot about um, self-discovery for, for you, uh, kind of doing the work on yourself, making sure you understand what drives you, thinking about what's important to you, what your requirements are, and so on. That is the starting point. That is what should spawn the questions that you ask employers. That in conjunction with not only uh, questions around what's important to you and it's going to make you happy, then there are other general questions to ask which, uh, which you want to ask the company to make sure that it's a good company. So what you're ultimately trying to do is get at, with every question you ask, is this a good company? Solid, whatever, good culture, good finances, good organization, good marketplace, all that good stuff. And then is this a good company for me? You do those two things, you'll be fine. Now, uh, that, so how to choose the right job. That starts you off. Second thing is you can do now. Second for the second part, there's a couple assets you can use. If you have my book, Interview Intervention, it's Interview Intervention Communication that gets you hired. If you have the hardcover or the ebook or the audio book, there's a chapter in there on how to ask questions. There's also in that chapter there's a chapter. Uh, there are 39 great questions to ask inside that chapter. So it's not only how to ask the questions, but also 39 questions that you can ask them. And then you kind of pick what applies. If you got my interview intervention uh, free hardcover book where you get the hardcover, the ebook, and the audio book, and all you need to do is pay the $7 for the handling, if you, if you did that, you also got an ebook called How to Interview the Employer. 75 great questions to ask before you take any jobs. So there's like twice as many in that ebook because I did the ebook after I wrote the book. So I would look at those. And if you don't have the interview intervention book, you just get it. It's for $7. It's the greatest deal in town. 
You get the ebook, the audio book, the hardcover book mailed to your house, and you also get that ebook that I just mentioned. And you can join the Interview Intervention Facebook community. So, so I would I would do that, and you'll have a whole bunch of questions that you can ask. Alex, hey, you are a boot camper. You're already a boot camper. You paid. You're in. Now you just need to make sure you're getting the emails, or maybe you should give us a Gmail or something. I don't know. From Ireland, I've been there. It's like the prettiest place on the planet. Uomo, found my YouTube channel and the weekly emails. Awesome. Super frustrated energy interviewing in the state of companies and how they handle applicants. I'm with you, my friend. I, I don't love it. I, I I just I hear too many bad stories, but you need to hang in there and you need to you need to make sure that you you know you're worth it. Don't don't settle. You know, I always tell people you get what you settle for. It's actually you usually get less than what you're willing to settle for. Settle for more. Settle for more. Isa, how are you? Yeah, you're a boot camper. I sent a question to the info at Malawak last week, and I'm hoping you can email. Isa, if you got questions, send them into the comments in the Malawak Academy system. My inbox is totally flooded with stuff i don't i can't um keep track of all that go into the portal and then i'll get a specialized email and i'll see it uomo i've noticed overall salary ote are down significantly does this relate to the verbal offers placed by recruiters it does not it does not if 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 you are getting lower than normal ote it could be any number of, of things. It could be the company itself is just not paying well. It could be you're not performing well in the interviewing processes. So um, so I, 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 I'm not sure. It is not verbal placed by re- recruiters, believe me. Okay, wait, I think I got John Bailey there. Issa... I know you got to work. Got to work. Got to work. <laughs> Joshua, thanks. I'm not sure what that was. Jeff Chase. Hey, Andy, trying to convince my son how important LinkedIn is to find secure new jobs, especially his profile. Won't listen to his dad, but he will probably listen to you. You know what? I, I'm guessing that he will, and uh, I hope that he does. I hope that he does. Tim Gales. Should there be a difference between the boss hunting email and cover letter? The boss hunting email is a cover letter. I sent the boss hunting letter and was asked to submit online as well. So if you were asked to submit online and the ATS asked for the cover letter, it's okay to send the boss hunting cover letter. But Tim, you got to remember, the boss hunting cover letter opens up with a targeted message to the boss. So if you're sending it to me, you are opening with that compliment, admiration, gift, so to speak. If you're sending it in to the system you'd want to alter that to you know the reason i'm applying is for this position or if they said it, it, it they said hey apply for that position in the ats then switch the cover letter to the four sentence or whatever and then if it's if it's no just go into just go into our system and just submit your resume then use the seven sentence cover letter the no job opening cover letter that's what you would want to do there. So just make sure you've got you've got that down. The boss hunting cover letter is a cover letter, but it's a cover letter that you're sending directly to somebody who you are targeting specifically that's going to be tailored to that individual. If you're going in the applicant tracking system, you're not tailoring it to an individual. You're, you're altering it and tailoring it to the job or tailoring it to the company. Hope that helps. Uh, HW, can you say something about moving across country? I'm not sure what specifically you mean. If you mean how do I uh, find a job across the country, check my video on how to get an out-of-state job for sure. Sunny Day. Hi, Andy. I applied to a junior position at a company I love. Okay. I am more mid-level senior. Can I ask for a more senior title? You can. Uh, How, when, at the end, I'd accept a lower salary for a more senior job title. Uh, personally, me, I would rather have a lower title and more money, but that's okay. Sonny, you can do either of that. Don't do anything until the end. And lots of times, uh, if companies 
look at your resume and they see you are a mid or senior level and they're willing to interview you, what they're probably thinking right out of the shoot is, oh, okay, if she crushes it, we'll just appropriately level her. Meaning they'd give you a bigger title, they'd give you more money. They're really just looking for great people that do these kind of functions. And this happens a lot. It really does. It happens quite a lot. So that's why I always say to people, I want you to try to be thoughtful about the positions that you submit your resume for, but I also want you to recognize that you can think a level down and you can think a level up as well. So, but go get them. Momo, hi Andy, I have an interview today. Good luck. Expected salary in the company listed on uh, for the role on LinkedIn is not only lower than my current salary, not to mention my ideal figure, but I'm still going in just for the experience. You are not going in for the experience. You are going in to crush it so that they amp up that salary. Do you have suggestions on how to address the salary in this circumstance? I do. So, Momo, don't say anything about the salary, okay? If they ask you what's your expected salary, I want you to say, I did see the salary on the on the on the on the on the uh, on the job description or on the role description or where on LinkedIn or whatever um, you know money is important to me sure but it's not the only thing I really am interested in the entire offering from the company and so I'm excited to you know to interview with you and I would not say that's acceptable I would not say well I really want more money it, don't do any of that just get in the process and get going and don't eat do not for one second think about that salary and then crush it and then get to the end and then if they say hey you're great this is what we want to offer you then say okay that's fine but i want this and then you and then you do your counter offer if you uh you said you have the interview today so you're not you're probably not going to be able to take in all of my salary negotiation videos but check those out and you don't need to worry about that today what you really need to worry about today is checking out my video on uh, the best answer to what's your expected salary. That's what I would do. Watch that video. It's got a million two views on it. I mean, it's 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 a popular one. Check that out. Mortal Living, your name is Yuri. Awesome. You are welcome. You got the book. Awesome. Silver Bullet Chapter. What an eye. Yeah, it is a good one. Like taking interview verbal skill from prepared to extraordinary. Hey, I have a I have a one other announcement in addition to Benny. Reyes today. I can't remember what I've told you because I've, I've, I've maybe mentioned this a time or two, but we have finalized, uh, dare I say, we've finalized a four-day workshop. It's free that I'm going to be giving you on October 10th, sorry, 8th, 10th, 15th, and 17th. So Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, they're going to be at live office hours slot times. So my careers in coffee on the 8th and the 15th, those are Tuesdays, are going to be moved to 11 o'clock. They won't be careers in coffee. I'm going to be teaching you. We're going to be having a workshop. It is job interview communication. These are advanced interpersonal skills that are going to help you get hired. And we're going to be talking about how do you build rapport. I'm literally going to give you a formula for how you build rapport with somebody and how you identify the areas in which you need to focus your interaction from the moment a breath comes out of your mouth. And how do you do that? I'm going to take you through some neat stuff. I'm also going to teach you how to give a presentation in a job interview. Those are four days, Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, October's, October 8th, 10th, 15th, and 17th. So I want, you to, I want you to know that. Just wanted to get that plug in there. You'll be seeing more from me about that. It'll be, it's going to be awesome. I'm going to do it on YouTube. You don't need to register for it, but you should pop on by. And uh, I will leave the replays up um, you know, for the duration of that span. So hope that helps. And so you're going to get more on that interview and stuff. Yuri, that's great. Katarina. Master's student in performing arts management, graduating in one month. Awesome. Congratulations. How to reach out to former internship supervisors for job opportunities. Visible, not visible on their site, in and out of their department. Katerina, it is the best. That is the best, absolute, most awesome way to get a job. If you want to reach back to these organizations and these individuals, uh, whether you knew them or did not know them, hey, I really enjoyed working with you. 
I you were one of the first people I thought of as far as reaching out as I'm graduating in a month. I wanted to know if there's an opportunity to work with you. I loved being part of your team or whatever. That's somebody that you that you know. Somebody you don't know. I'm reach I'm a you know I'm I'm graduating in performing arts in in a, in a month. I wanted to reach out to you because I actually am interested in your area. I did an internship with your company or multiple internships or whatever. And so I wanted to reach out to you to see if there was an opportunity to work with you. That's it. Just go right in. Go right in. Don't even like just go, go, go. Uh, 50 minutes in if you need to rewind that. But that's what I would do there. Ryan. I declined a promo offer recently. The hiring manager basically gave me a list of problems org issues immediately before saying, well, then I'd like to offer you the position. I asked for time to review, as you suggest, I always do, but I wonder if my caution was justified or if I allowed one person to derail the offer. I wouldn't work much with this person, but the issues seemed pervasive thoughts. I'm not entirely sure I get the complete picture. My general answer to these kind of situations and to anybody who wants to Look at an offer, anybody who wants to quit their job, anybody who wants to take a new job, anybody who wants to change careers, anybody. Um, patience is your friend and more time is better and thinking and getting that information, all of that stuff serves you better. I would not necessarily let one person derail my desire to work with an organization. That's, that's me, uh, unless that person was going to be my direct boss. If that's the case, I would run if, if, if that's the situation because I'm not working with somebody like that. But, um, but I, I, I'm not really entirely sure. Maybe if you'd like to hop in the boot camp and put your situation in, be happy to read it and give you further thoughts. I think, wait, I think we had an earlier question from Adam Stark here that I want to make sure I get before we, we jump off. Um, this was early, very, very early in the chat. At university, I studied filmmaking. Long story short, on most projects, I did double duties, directing and producing, as generally three, six team members were lazy, unreliable. Despite this, I achieved high results as well as turning the poor performers to being above par. How do I talk about this without bad-mouthing people? Adam and everybody else, you never, never talk about a sub-par team that you had. They, they were your team. You elevated them. That's it. It, there's nothing that you need to say. It, th this is about what you did in relation to who they were and who they became. You were the teacher. The boss is the teacher, right? The manager, the person who inspires, the person who leads. That's it. You don't need to say, they. I had to do double duties because my team stunk. You just did double duty. That was it. You did whatever it took to ensure, and what you loved was you had an opportunity to get into some of these other areas. I liked being a player coach. Those are your, all positive, all positive. That That's what I did. I wanted to get in there and do it, and while I was doing it, I was teaching them to elevate their performance, right? Just all positive. All right, hope that helped. Evelyn O, what boot camp day were you planning to talk about ATS? Uh, Kara, what's the second boot camp day? October 18th. October 25th. October 25th, Evelyn O. And if, if anybody is wondering what Evelyn is asking me, we just had a boot camp special. It ended yesterday. A whole bunch of you got in, which is awesome. That was our September monthly meeting. In October and in November, between October 18th, and November, in the middle of November, there's five Fridays in a row, October 18th, October 25th, then I think there's maybe three in November. It's on the boot camp page. Uh, we're going through a five-week run of the boot camp. So there will be a special, but you can have to wait a month. Uh, or you can jump in now, and if you send me an email, I'll, I'll rebate you the, the 100 bucks that you missed, that you, the deadline that you missed, because I want you in, and I want you going through it, because October is the absolute worst time to be looking for a job, so you're going to need all the help you can get. Uh, during those sessions, I teach for us a portion, and then we do a hefty Q&A in, in a private boot camp environment through Zoom. On the second session, I am going to be going through a lot more detail on how to get 
um, be successful in the applicant tracking system, how to make sure you don't get immediately bounced when you put your resume in there. Uh, we're gonna try to give you a, a deeper checklist on the applicant tracking system. I have a resume checklist and the things you should do, but now we're, we, we're elongating it and making it more and more in-depth as it relates to applicant tracking systems. And Kara and I uh, are working with one of the boot campers and we're, we're in the process of trying to evaluate, see what conclusions we can draw, going through trying to test this stuff. And, uh, and so that's gonna be October 25th. So it doesn't, I mean, you can get in the boot camp, boot camp's all recorded, all the stuff's available. It's just that you're gonna have five weeks in a row where you, you can meet with me and the other boot campers privately to spend a couple hours and go through your stuff specifically and learn some deeper stuff. So uh, that is not stuff I would share uh, publicly in this, in this format. It's just, it's the kind of stuff that um, we reserve just for the people in the premium programs. So Evelyn, hope that helps. Alejandro, hey to you. How can I make a career change? I've been applying, but nothing yet. Greetings from Mexico. Greetings to you. Mexico is one of my favorite countries. Uh, I would, uh, like I was mentioning to Riaz, I would go and check out the career changer playlist. That is your starting point. Uh, if you, the complimentary, the free stuff, starting point, if you want to make a career change. There's a whole bunch of them, a whole bunch of videos. Uh, San, Santosh, I think it's Santosh. Uh, is it ideal for an engineering graduate to work in a sales and marketing company? Uh, you know, that's what I was looking for when I had my electrical engineering degree. Uh, I ended up going into IT consulting, but engineering students, in my opinion, this this is the truth. I speak the truth. Can do just about anything. They really can. I mean, it, you don't want if you don't want to be in sales because you like dealing in semiconductors and bits and bytes and computer programs and hardware or whatever. That's fine. But your degree is an avenue into the working world. That's it. I I don't. It's it's I, It's not about ideal. It's about your level of interest. So I would. I I true story. I, I'm an electrical engineering undergrad for you know double E Iowa State. I come out of school. I go into uh, IT consulting and I worked for Anderson Consulting. I worked there ten years. That company is now called Accenture. So the first uh, the first uh, three or four weeks, actually first four weeks, I was working with a group of nine people with all different backgrounds. And then the next three weeks after that, I was sitting at a table. These were my this was my boat crew, so to speak. There was a theology major, a history major, a marketing major, an engineer, and a comp sci major, another engineer, a mechanical engineer, something like that, and me. And they were teaching all of us programming. It was the craziest thing. So, I, you know, your degrees to me are a ticket to nothing. They're just a, 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 an avenue to, I mean, they're not an entitlement. I mean, you have to go out and you have to get it. Uh, meaning you have to get your job, you have to hustle, you have to learn on the job, you have to, you know, all the, all the trades that you're going to pick up are going to be on the job. So go, do, do, do what you want. Do, do what you, what you find interesting. I think I answered that one. Caitlin West, third round interview question here. Your videos have helped me get this far. Awesome. They're asking me to do a budget presentation and lead an activity, then meeting with HR to discuss benefits, help. Okay. <laughs> I love this. And Caitlin, you will definitely want to come on uh, October, ooh, ow, October 17th when I do the presentation for the workshop. Uh, but I know you're going you're gonna to have to do this before then, I'm guessing. So anytime that you do a... Uh, a presentation. There are some factors that you want to make sure you are presenting that have everything to do with the audience's understanding of the context and how you drew the conclusions and laid out the roadmap or laid out the solution or whatever it is that you're going to do. So in your case, it's budgeting. So if you are going to budget something, the tricky thing about budgets are most companies' budgets are arbitrary or derived using a formula that really isn't going to lead to an accurate measure. Let me be really specific. Somebody might say, well, geez, you know, the market's pretty hot. All our salespeople should be able to, to sell a million dollars 
And in order for us to make $10 million, we're going to need to budget for 10 salespeople at a cost of $200,000 a piece or whatever, right? Something like that. Or somebody might say, our marketing budget is going to be a function of our total revenue from last year. So if our revenue was you know, $100,000, our marketing budget is going to be 3%, so $3,000 is our marketing budget. That's how companies actually budget stuff, which is nuts. There's no forethought into the future or the past that actually makes any sense. So when I have to budget something, what I would say, I would say to my people or for you in the interview. So what I, in order to, to budget properly, I took a look at historical budget. So I need that data from you, right? I need some kind of data, some kind of idea. And I'm going to take a look at the mark, current market conditions against last year's market conditions. I need to look at the performers. I need to whatever, whatever unit this is. So you know, if I'm trading out salespeople, I might be able to get people who are more equipped to sell more faster, right? These kind of variables will change. So it doesn't, you don't have to be right. You have to be logical. So I'm putting this budget together and here's what I did. I took last year's information. I looked at the resources. I looked at the costs, the infrastructure spend, the employee spend, the this and that. I'm budgeting, you know, X millions of dollars to navigate through this department. Here's what I think is going to influence our ability to stay on budget, right? Because what's important about the budget, you want to you make sure that you stay on the budget. So here are the factors that need to be in place in order for us to maintain it. Boom, boom, boom. Here's what we're going to do each month to make sure that we're appropriately monitoring the spend, the future spend, the past spend, where we're high, where we're low, where we need to make adjustments, if we need to borrow within. That's the protocol we're going to do each month and so on. So like you are stepping them through the entire process of, of how you would do that. Now I'd use those examples because that's a budget presentation. And that's how I would that's how I would lay something like that out. Because the budget itself is not really what you're presenting. You're making an argument that this is the budget that it should be, but the real argument you're making is not only do I believe that that's the budget it should be, here's why I believe it, and here's what I'm gonna do to ensure that we keep it, that we keep that budget, we don't run over budget. So that's important there. Uh, leading an activity, I, I'm not sure if it's the presentation which you're leading, but leading an activity is uh, relatively simple. I mean, you're given the direction based on what the goal is. So first thing I always want to know when I'm leading something is what are we trying to what are we trying to do? What, what, what is our goal? Is our goal of this activity to come out of here with a project plan? Okay, fine. Okay, in order to put the project plan together, how many people do I have in this, in this activity? Five. Great, there's five sections to the plan. Your A, your B, your C, your D, your E. Okay, here's what we need to do. Right? I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of like that. It's, 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 it's direction, giving, and support that you're providing. So I hope that helps. I hope that at least got you rolling down the right path. All right, uh, I think, Riaz, I think I answered this one already. Cecilia Hay from London, my boot camper, Sarah McHugh, how are you? Been offered an initial phone screen. All right, folks, I'm going to try to take this one and one more because then I got to get rolling. I have been offered an initial phone screen interview. It will be an initial interview. If selected to move forward, we'll go on to an in-person. Do you have any phone interview tips? Sarah, I do. Check my blog. Type in the word phone interview. There's an article with like eight steps to ace it. Uh, for you, and let me see where the next one, Div is it Deviange? I'm not sure how to say that. I hope I pronounced it okay. Went through tech screen for level four on site next week. Wait, went through tech screen, tech screen for level four on site next week. Have heard after tech screen level five position is open as well. Uh, how do I position myself? Oh, I see what you mean. You're talking about support levels, levels four and five. Uh, what I would say is in the interview uh, or with your contact or whoever you are interviewing with, I would reach into them and say, based on my performance thus far in the interviews, right? You already went through a text screen. Uh, do you feel, I, I noticed that the level five opened up. And so do you feel that my skills are strong enough for me to interview for that? Would you would you consider me for that? That's it. I would not make a huge, huge deal out of it. Just try to go to your contact, meaning the recruiter or HR person or who's ever navigating you through this and get the feedback and see if they would consider you for that. And I'm guessing it's a large enough company. 
All right, folks, I got to get rolling. Uh, remember, workshop 8th, 9th, 15th, and 17th. If you missed the boot camp special and you are like kicking yourself in the butt, we don't want to have anybody, you know, pulling their hair out of their head. We're here for you. Email me at support at milewalk.com and let me know. And we will do what we can to extend the, you know, $100 off that you missed. You can watch the recording from yesterday, which was awesome fun. We did almost two hours of pretty juicy stuff. And then we've got a, a stretch starting on October 18th, which will be right after the four-day day workshop completes. So hope that helps. Uh, the interview intervention book is free. The Outer Reach But Insight book is free. Uh, there's loads of stuff on the Mile Walk Academy. I will see you at 6.30 a.m. Maybe we'll do 6 a.m. next Tuesday. We're having some email issues with the, with the video on the networking message. And then I'll be there for careers and coffee. The video on the networking message, if you want to watch it, is 19 minutes and 51 seconds. So it's not, a, it's not a quick one like I've had the last few weeks, but it's really, really deep. It's really, really good. It's seven pieces that you need to include in the networking message. So it's really helpful. All right, you guys, be great. Love having you all. I will see you on Tuesday. Take care.